So Eric, we can start. I have heard your name so many times and I was like, I don't, I don't know who this Orland guy is. So let's find out who you are, but you have some amazing numbers. So you got to a thousand agents in less than one year in your downline at EXP. That's amazing. We are just, we are just 900 and I've been with the company a little over three years. So your numbers are unbelievable. Um, and I also hear that you've been in real estate for a long time. You also do coaching and, you know, all of those things. But if you and me met in a bar, this is like one of my favorite things, right? Because I like, I don't like to run corporate America, right? Mm -hmm. So if you and me met in a bar and I asked you, hey, Eric, so nice to meet you. What do you do? What would you say? I work for an incredible, credible real estate organization that really has transformed the way that real estate brokerage operates. It's the first cloud-based real estate brokerage. And typically there are two, I'm going to give you a little, I'm going to add on a little bit here. There are two inherent benefits to being cloud-based. One is the highest level of coaching, training, and support the industry has ever seen. The other being cloud-based is obviously technology that helps agents identify buyers and sellers so they can transact more and transact in the most efficient manner possible. The second benefit, Gogo, is the reason that you and I get up and go to work in the morning. And that is financial. At eXp, realtors are keeping more of their commissions because being cloud-based, we don't have the same overhead we have to pay out. And we also offer realtors multiple streams of income, giving realtors the incredible opportunity to transform their business from being solely transactional to being able to create a passive income and having ownership just like the brokerage that they've typically worked for in the past. Love it. That would be a quick, that would be a quick elevator speech. See, this is what I like, because this is how you hold a conversation, right? So instead of being EXPing all over them, you just tell them how you really feel. I love it. So Eric, you got into real estate about more than 30 years ago, if I remember in your bio, how and where? About, about 30 years ago, um, I'll quickly give you my background. So um, grew up in New York, went to UCLA um, and spent 40 years in California. I didn't do a whole lot until I was 30, to be really honest. I was a you know pseudo sophisticated beach bum. I played beach volleyball. I played beach volleyball and I had a very wealthy aunt who supported me in my endeavor of playing volleyball. It was a great life. 30 years old, I was getting married at the time. And um, my aunt looked at me and said, you know, I'm cutting you off financially. And I was like horrified. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do with myself. Um, 1990, 1991 was really one of the worst real estate markets in the history of real estate. And I've always believed that cream rises to the top, no matter what you do, that if you are committed, that if you refine your selling skills, that if you manifest what you want, you will absolutely receive it. So I got into real estate, you know, never really had a job previously. And despite everyone saying to me, are you crazy going into real estate? Why would you do that? I had a very, very successful, very successful launch. Um, I was one of the top agents at Remax in the state by my second year. As life would have it, my wife at the time, uh, who to this day remains my best friend, got a job working for Bill Clinton, Betsy Myers. She ran the White House Women's Office for Bill Clinton. And then ran Barack's campaign, her sister is Didi Myers, the former White House press secretary. So I actually gave up producing after being at it for two and a half, three years. And I've always believed in life. The more you, the more you give, the more you receive. So I started simply sharing with people how I was so successful in real estate and really enjoyed the coaching aspect of it. Um, and coached for a long period of time. And then about two and a half years ago, joined EXP. And it was really funny when I reached out to my former students and they knew that I had joined EXP, they wouldn't pick up my phone, but they wouldn't pick up my phone calls. I felt like the ugly stepchild with a bad case of acne, right? All of a sudden <laughs> I went from being popular to unpopular. <laughs> so um, I systematically picked up the phone. And like Oga said, I've been very fortunate. I've got about 2000 people in my group right now. Um, one of the fastest growing groups at EXP. And I'm really fortunate. I feel really, really grateful. And I feel I wake up each and every day being blessed that Glenn Sanford, with his incredible genius, came up with this platform that allows each and every one of us to build our dreams and create whatever destiny we choose to create. I know, right? And and look, I'm so proud of every single person who's here. There's over 900 of us now in the Team Google organization and 27 on this call. It's awesome. That's awesome. It's awesome for the one who showed up, right? Exactly. But those are but those are the numbers. Those are the averages, right? Of, of any real estate company, you have five percent who does something with the opportunity that's in front of them, and ninety five percent of them, I don't know what they do all day. They're not here. They're doing something. 
but not this. <clears throat> so yes. Eric, you came over with the idea, well, actually, let me ask you this. Which part of the EXP model attracted you to EXP most? Was it revenue share? Was it stocks and ownership? Was it icon? It was, uh, boy, I feel like I'm being very long-winded today telling stories. So I'll, I'll give you, I'll answer your question the following way. So um, I had come, I'd had a pretty successful real estate career. I, you know, went on to be a real estate coach. I left the industry for three years. I was an investment banker for one of the top investment banking firms in the country. Um, and as life would have it, at 58, two and a half years ago, um, I wound up going bust. I wound up going bankrupt. I have a son, and I had always preached to him. We raised him in Northern California. And I always preached to him. His name is Jackson. He's actually working for me this summer here in Puerto Rico. But I said to Jackson, Jackson, if you work hard, I promise that I'll be committed to sending you to whatever school you want to go to. As life would have it, he winds up getting into Syracuse University, which is a private school in upstate New York. It's about $80,000 a year. I went up going broke at 58 in April of 2019. I come from a family of high overachievers. My younger brother's a vascular surgeon. My sister's a Yale doctor, married to a Yale doctor. And here I was 58 years old. I am telling you, I really lost everything. Not only was I unable to pay for his college, I didn't know how I was gonna put a roof over my head or put food on the table. So I had heard about EXP for two years, two years earlier. And for two years, you all know that self-talk that we do. I'm all important. I'm not going to talk to realtors. I'm too good for this. I'm too good for that. At the end of the day here, I was 58 years old and I didn't have two pennies to rub together. Business wiped me out. And I looked at the EXP model. When I came to realize, Gogo, is the following, that the model is just what the model is. There were no holes that needed to be plugged. EXP allows every agent on a global basis the opportunity to have the highest level of coaching, training, support, and technology, while giving them the enormous opportunity to fend better for themselves and their family by allowing them to keep more of their commissions and providing them multiple streams of income. And my mindset was the following. I was not all of a sudden going to become that slick oil salesperson that rammed this model down people's throat. I was going to, I was going to approach people in the most spiritually healthy manner possible by learning what their needs were, by asking appropriate questions, and then simply comparing and contrasting what they were receiving at their existing brokerage firm versus what EXP was offering. And I believed in my heart of hearts, GoGo, -Go, that unless agents were wearing blinders and had their hands over their ears, that they would embrace EXP knowing that this model aligned with the direction that they wanted to take their business. So in answer to your question, I came into this business strictly with the mindset of building a RevShare organization. I'm speechless. It takes a lot to, to make me shut up, right? So thank you for sharing that because I don't want, right? Like we all bear our crosses on earth. Everybody, nobody's like born with a silver spoon and just never going to have anything happen to them in life, right? So the fact that you shared how successful you've been, but it also that it broke you at age 58 and you had to start over, like that's a big deal. I, I, I don't know you guys, everybody who's listening, but to me, I love to hear these because then I know no matter what you are faced with in this moment, you always know that there's a way up, right? So if you're at the very bottom, you know, it can only get better from here. So you come over, broke. How did you start Agent Attraction? Broke. broke. I mean, um, I had been dating my now girlfriend for about, I really, you guys are going to laugh when I say this. We always laugh about this. I was dating her for two weeks. And, you know, there was a little spark, obviously, when you start dating somebody. And I think on our second or third date, I said, I know this may come off as being a little weird, but would you loan me $5,000? Right, that's like how we entered the relationship. Now, of course, we're still together and it has obviously paid for itself over and over again. But, um, you know, I, I truly believe that you wake up with a positive mindset and you manifest exactly what you want in your life. You know, whether it's your interpersonal relationships, whether it's your career, but it wasn't about if I was going to be successful with RevShare, it was how successful I was going to be. I was really clear. I could tell you exactly how many people I'm going to have in my organization within the next four to five years. That number is $30,000. It's, pardon me, $30,000. It's 30,000 agents as part of my organization making a million dollars a month. That's really important. That's what I set out to do. And that's, in fact, what I will manifest. I am committed to doing that. And I'm committed to doing it with people who I like being around who I enjoy being with, who I enjoy building something together with. I wrote it down. 30,000 agents, a million dollars a month. Because 30,000 agents. And I carry around a gold card. You know, I keep it in my pocket all the time that it's very clear. And I look at it every morning and every evening, what it is I'm going to accomplish. And I take action each and every day. 
my focus is to connecting with realtors where I could be of service and simply show them, introduce them to this platform and see if it aligns with the direction that they perhaps would like to take their business and how it may impact them positively in fending financially for themselves and their family. So what is that process looks like for you? So I do it with the power of social media. Do you pick up the phone? Do you do events? Do you meet people for coffee? Yeah. Like what, what is a lot better looking than I am, right? So big personality, beautiful, right? Is an internet sensation? I pick up the phone. I pick okay. up this tool each and every day and I connect with people. And it has been one agent at a time. And I think for me, you know, it is really simple to get on the phone and ask seven questions. Any one of you could do that. And if I make enough phone calls a day, it's really interesting. My son just got here a week ago from Syracuse, I had mentioned, and has been working for me and has booked, I think, eight appointments for me, has booked eight appointments with people that are absolutely open-minded and have an open heart to learning about EXP. And, you know, I did it using, using the telephone and connecting with people. Really simple. So since you said seven questions, I am ready for the seven questions. Okay, so I'll typically start off a conversation and I yep. want to build a relationship. This is not what I call a hard close. I believe that when somebody is thinking about making a career change, that that requires you to get to know them and build a rapport with them, have them feel comfortable. And you have to determine, do you want this person on your team? I have actually told people that I do not want them as part of my team if I thought they were going to sabotage my efforts. So I'll start off every conversation. And I'll role play with you, Gogo. So, you know, Gogo, good morning, Gogo. Really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me this morning. Um, okay. I was looking forward to, I was really looking forward to us connecting. Hey, Gogo, in order to get a feel for who you are, and let me paraphrase this by saying the following I'm not going to talk a lot. This is Gogo's, this is Gogo's chance to share with me who she is and what her needs are. And it's my opportunity to be a good listener. And if Gogo chooses to share a lot, that's an indication that illustrates that she's comfortable. I don't have to guess if she's comfortable. If I can get her talking, I know she's comfortable. So Gogo, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to get a flavor for who you are. Would you share with me a little bit about your background? Where are you from originally? How long have you been in real estate? And what type of success are you experiencing? Got it. So I'm originally from Romania. I live in Michigan. Got licensed in 2011. I was a broke agent for about two years. I made $16,000 in my first year. I don't know if I covered my gas, right? Um, and expenses for the year. And then I'm the sorest loser you ever meet. So I got into real estate knowing the, the stats, the 80-20 rule. And I didn't want to be in the 80%. I want to be in the top of the 20%. So I worked very hard. And three, the, my third year on in my career, I became a top producing agent. I've been ever since. I've been with Real Estate One for seven and a half years, one year with Keller and EXP for the last three. Excellent. And what type of volume are you currently doing? What did you do over the last 12 months? Yeah, so I'm actually technically retired. I do have a small team here in Michigan. Um, so all of my leads, I feed to them. So they do all of the transactions. Um, we did 30, Clancy was my only agent last year. She did 36 deals. And then this year now we have four agents and uh, we probably are close to that <laughs> this part of the year already. And then now I have a downline of 900 agents here at the XP. Excellent. Where do you want to take your business, Kodo? Where do you see taking your business in the next three to five years? Yeah, I mean, I would like to have it, have all of my income to be passive. I, I'm ready for retirement. I, when I say I work very hard, I, I probably did 10 people's work in one year, right? <laughs> I worked right. like a mad woman, mad woman for three years. So that's 30 years right there, all in three years. So I think, uh, I think I'm ready for retirement. So I'm going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, long weekends for the rest of my life. So I'm going to just deviate for a second. So Gogo, we have to imagine that she's with a different brokerage firm, right? Because I'm calling people who are not. So let's with go EXP. back. Let's go back and say that I am a top producing agent and I am ready to build a team. Gotcha. I'm ready to remove some transactions off my plate and, um, you know, just have a little more time back for myself and my family and maybe just make money besides just commissions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke Gogo here a little bit, right? I'm going to ask her, how do you plan on accomplishing that? And what you're going to find is most agents are going to get stuck. They don't have a blueprint. They have no game plan how they're going to get from point A to point B. Gogo is going to respond to that. And then I'm going to ask Gogo, Gogo, who is your, who is your current brokerage partner? Who do you hang your license with? Okay. So I'll go back to Keller Age, right? <laughs> um, so I'm currently with Keller Williams. Oh, awesome. And how long have you been there for? Eight months. Oh, eight months. 
Gogo, would you share with me what do you like best about having Keller uh, KW as your brokerage partner? So I switched to them from real estate one because um, they had what's called profit share. So that's the reason that I left real estate when I had it really good at real estate, when I had no reason to leave, my cap and cut was amazing, but I went to Keller because of profit share. So I'm, I'm ready to start making money in, in some other ways than just commissions. Ah, that was, she just gave me her goal. She told me exactly what she's looking to do. And we know at Keller Williams, that's profit share. Watch how I take this and introduce revenue share, which is completely different. Gogo, what would you do to change or modify your experience at Keller Williams? In other words, what don't you like about the relationship you have with KW? I mean, you know, there is this thing called profit. If there's no profit, there's no share. So I really would like to become Gary Keller maybe and just take that 3% of the top and come to me when I'm introducing agents to the company because even though I introduced 42 agents to Keller Williams, my overall profit share by far, it's only been $900. That's not worth one phone call for me. So I don't know if there's another way of somehow making more money passively. All right, Gogo made this really easy for me. So I'm gonna take this in a little direction. What I would usually say, an agent's gonna tell you they did 30 transactions, they wanna to go to 50 transactions. They're gonna tell me what they like or don't like. What I asked them was what I call an open-minded question. And I'm going to use the word open-minded when I ask Gogo this. Why do I use the word open-minded? Does anyone want to take a stab at that? So that I'm going to ask Gogo if she's open-minded. If Gogo tells me what she's not open-minded, what she's saying, she's, she's closed-minded and ignorant, and nobody wants to say that, right? I can't say, hey, you're being closed-minded and ignorant. In fact, I'd certainly ask the question if she'll be open-minded. Gogo, would you be open-minded? Would you be open-minded to exploring the EXP platform? if it allowed you to keep more of your hard-earned commissions, and at the same time, if it may be aligned with the direction that you wanted to take your real estate career by offering you multiple streams of income, one of which, by the way, happens to be passive. Gogo, would you find that compelling? Yes. Okay, now watch. That's one way. I could say this 10 ways. Based on what Gogo had said earlier, I would use the same thing. If I can, will you? Using the word open-minded. Gogo, would you be open-minded to exploring the EXP brokerage platform? If you absolutely knew that all-important passive income that you're looking for, if that, if that opportunity was significantly larger than the opportunity that was being made available to you at Keller Williams, would you be open-minded about potentially making the switch if you saw the benefit of embracing EXP, what we call revenue share model, where the company is sharing not their profits, but their actual revenues with you, which was a billion dollars last quarter. Would you be open-minded about taking a deeper dive into the model? Absolutely. She told me what was important to her, right? And I simply distinguished profit share, which is about the profitability of a branch versus the company sharing its actual revenues, which was over a billion dollars last quarter. I love the fact that you use, I use the, if, if I, if I could, would you, I use that sentence right. all the time, but I like it that you blend it in together with like, if you are open-minded, like, right. So you said you're open-minded. If I could, would you, because now they, how are they going to say no? Right. It's very hard. I'm putting them in a pickle and I'm yeah. not doing it by talking at them. A great salesperson doesn't talk a lot. A great person, great, a great salesperson asks a lot of questions. Know your audience. And if you say to somebody, are you open-minded? The beauty of that is it's almost impossible for somebody to say, I'm not open-minded. It was really funny, Gogo. -go. A couple of months ago at, during the um, convention in Las Vegas, I'd get up every morning at five o'clock. You know, most of my clients were on the East Coast. And I would start making my phone calls along the strip. And I asked somebody, would you be open-minded? And he said to me, I really resent that question. I said, would you share with me why? Why is that? He said, because if I tell you I'm not open-minded, then I'm ignorant. I said, that would be fair. He said, you intentionally do that, don't you? I said, I absolutely do. Because if something is better for you, right? If something is absolutely better for you, wouldn't it make sense to explore it and simply compare and contrast what EXP is offering versus what you're currently receiving at your current brokerage firm? If your brokerage from where you're at right now, by simply comparing and contrasting, this will either affirm that you're exactly where you're supposed to be, or perhaps shed light why EXP is the fastest growing brokerage firm in the history of real estate and potentially offer you something that you're not currently receiving.
So how do you get to these people? Are these people that you already know? Is there some sort of an introductory email that goes out prior for them jumping on a call? Or are you literally just calling a stranger and crossing your fingers and they answer the call? So um, this is going to sound very tedious, but you know, there's lots of different ways that I built my business. One, I'll jump on realtor.com and pick a zip code anywhere in the country, and I'll be committed to making 40 or 50 calls, right? I, if I'm taking my girlfriend, if Irene and I are going out to lunch, I will stop by six open houses, not going to sell the XP. I'm going to flash a smile. I'm going to compliment about their, about their home. I'm going to go home and I'm going to, uh, when I get back home, I'll, I'll follow up during the week with them. I'll typically go to two real estate events a week, right? It could be a board event, could be a title company event. It could be a lending company event. What I love about Revenue Share is our audience is absolutely defined for us. When we are selling real estate, we're going out into the world trying to identify who the heck is the next buyer or seller, right? That could be tedious. That could be really hard. What I love about what we're doing is I know exactly who my audience is. It's any realtor that is out there that wants to put themselves or their family in a better position to fend for themselves. So I- um, I put all three down, two events a week. Two events a week, title really? company event, a lending event, a board yeah. event. I go to six open houses and then I create a list of anybody who I've known in the industry, whether it's a friend or former colleague, somebody who's been on the opposite side of a transaction. And those are easy. I almost think as an active agent selling real estate, you guys have an easier time because you're already communicating. When you're doing a transaction with somebody, you're either listening to an offer or you're making an offer, right? So there's communication that already exists. This is a simple add-on to a conversation. So go, go, how are things going at KW for you? How long have you been there for? What do you like best about KW? What would you change about KW? Hey, go, go, would you be interested in exploring the EXP brokerage? I've done this a few times. Go, go, would you be interested in exploring the EXP brokerage platform if it allows you to keep more of your hard-earned commissions? And if it may be aligned with the direction that you would like to take your business going forward by offering you multiple streams of income, one of which happens to be passive, would you find that compelling? That's it. And then the other thing I do is I go whale hunting. Once a week. Y'all know what I mean by a whale hunting? No, I, I do, but explain it. All right. So in order to really have a big, big rev share organization, you need an influencer. It's part of your team. So an hour a week, I allow myself to dream. I allow myself, instead of going fishing for guppies, I go into the deep waters and I'm looking for a whale. I mean, a mega whale. So one of the reasons that I have... 2,000 people in my organization as I, I cold called a gentleman by the name of Orlando Montiel. Doug knows who that is. He is by far the fastest growing person at EXP. He does seminars and he has a minimum, it's mind blowing, of 1,000 people at every event in Tampa, in well, all over Florida, now expanding to the West Coast, in Houston. He is doing these events all over. So Orlando was a major influencer for me. So how, let's go back to Orlando. How did you get all of that? All right. So I had been doing some coaching in Miami. And as I was coaching, I had kept on hearing this name, Orlando Montiel, Orlando Montiel, especially from my Latin clients. And I knew our style of coaching was very different, but nonetheless, I heard really nice things about him, both as a human being, as a professional. And during my hour of my dream, looking for my whale, he was on my list of people to call. And I picked up the phone and we talk about this all the time. I've talked about this at seminars, picked up the phone and I very rarely leave a voicemail, but I did in this situation. I said, hey, hi, Orlando. My name is Eric Orland. I said, I'm a real estate, real estate coach that moved here to Miami from California about three or four years ago. And I know that we have coached a lot of the same clients and I've heard really nice things about you as both a human being and as a professional. And I would love to collaborate and see if we could potentially work together. When you have a chance, give me a buzz. 10 minutes later, my phone rings. It's Orlando Montiel. Hey, Eric, how are you? Nice to speak with you. Hey, Orlando, nice to speak with you as well. You know, small talking for a little bit. And I asked him a really good qualifying question. I said, Orlando, do you ever get sick and tired of having to resell agents on paying for your coaching platform or buying your coaching products? He goes to me, Eric, I hate it. I said, have you ever thought about taking these existing relationships and monetizing it in a way where you have a passive and residual income stream. He said to me, I love the sound of that. What do you got? 
I said, are you familiar with eXp? He said, oh, Eric, everybody knows of eXp. He said, my only concern with eXp is I am, I'm really afraid that it was sabotage my core business of coaching, that my business would go away because I get business from lots of other brokerage firms. I said, I understand. Is that your only concern? He said, pretty much. I said, do you know that Tim Harris, everyone knows who Tim Harris is, right? Tim, Tim and Julie Harris. On two weeks ago, I think. Right. That are you, are you aware of Tim and Julie Harris? And do you know who Sean Kokoska is? Sean was one of the authors of Bold, you know, him and his mom at KW. He said, of course I know Sean and I know Tim Harris. I said, do you know that they are with the XP? And as a matter of fact, a part of my group. He said, do, aren't, weren't they concerned? about joining eXp? Weren't they concerned about that affecting their core business? I said, you know, that's a great question to pose to them. Perhaps we should get them on the phone. Two weeks later, he came in and is by far, Gogo will tell you, the fastest growing person at eXp. You want one better? Yeah. So every Tuesday with my team, I cold call on a Zoom. So anybody that I've sponsored that is my front or second line, and this is my way of saying I'm a good sponsor and giving back to the people that had trust and confidence. And I call for the people that are below me. They don't have to have an intimate relationship with who I'm going to call. They have to know something about them, Gogo. So every Tuesday, I do a Zoom call from two to four. Person hands me a name the other day. I don't think any other thing ever. Great. Give me the background. Biggest listing agent in all of Miami-Dade County. Call him up major, major, major well. Corporate is meeting with him tomorrow morning. A couple of people from corporate are down in South Florida. They're meeting with him in Miami tomorrow. I'd be shocked if he didn't come on board with the organization. Folks, that came off of a cold call. That came off of a cold call. And he could be easily another Orlando. He's 50 people on his, he's 50 people on his team that's working. And I will not put him under me. I'll put him under somebody else in my organization. That's amazing. So... Can I? I'm never cold call, right? I don't know a single script. And you make it sound flows, it flows just right out of your mouth, right? So can we, can you do it one more time? A little slower. Okay. So okay. so we can take like I just want to take bullet point notes, like not the whole thing, but like bullet point notes of those, like in order how you kind of ask those questions. Okay. So I start off. So there are two main, what is Orlando's last name again? And have a real estate coach, a lender coach is very similar. Um, Montiel. Uh, Chad, ask me that question live. Unmute yourself for one second. I want to make sure I answer this. Hey, Eric, thanks uh, for addressing that quick. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so he works with a lot of uh, lenders and real estate agents. Um, does a lot of uh, both motiv motivational coaching and um, accountability Who? coaching, stuff like that. Who's that, Orlando? No, sorry. Um, it's uh, actually a, a friend of mine that I went to high school with, but he does this now. He actually he works out in uh, Scottsdale out in Arizona is where he yep. just moved his, his office to. Um, but he's out in, been out in Denver. He does it nationally. You have a great opportunity there. Right. And, you and know, that's, that's why I wanted to ask you is he's had that same same kind of hang up as what uh, sounds like Orlando has with the EXP part is he's he's afraid to alienate those um a lot of the, the lenders or potential other real estate agents with brokerages that are outside of eXp. You know, Chad, you could reach out to anybody who's done real estate coaching in eXp and typically any one of us would help you bring that person in because when you are more successful, all that does is help expand our brand. It makes it easier to bring everybody in. So I'm sure Orlando, Tim, Sean, myself, Gogo, whoever you need to lean on, utilize these people in your organization as a resource. You know, as a matter of fact, the person I was referring to in Miami, I found out that Jeff Wilhelm was in Miami this week. And Jeff spoke to him the other day. Jeff has nothing to do with my organization. He's in a completely different organization. I put this gentleman on the phone with Jeff and then Kevin Cottrell is in Florida meeting with him. So by all means, reach out to him, educate him. And if that is his hangup, bring in other coaches to let them know how joining eXp not only secured their coaching business, but allowed it to flourish. And I think Sean Kokoska could speak about that as well as anybody. Sean's business has absolutely blown up since yeah. joining eXp. Awesome. Blown up. 
Yeah. Right. So Chad, if you want, go back on the YouTube channel in Team Go Go for the agent attraction ones they are recorded. Find the one with Sean Kokaska. Find the one with Tim and Julie Harris. This one you're already on here with Eric. So you can get familiar with them and see who they are. And then just reach out to whoever you think would be the best fit that has the similar personality to the person that you're trying to attract. And I'm sure if you just said, hey, you know, I'm on the Team Go Go organization. If you would be, please, please, please give me half an hour of your time. Explain the situation. I'm sure they would help. Perfect. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, what Goga said was really important. Match the personality of the yeah. person, right? That you choose to speak to your contact. Make sure that there's a match there. And I have to be somewhat politically correct here, which I'm terrible at doing. But, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know, have not in this group. Just say what you want. <laughs> you know, there are some real estate coaches in a million years I would not put on with my client. They are so full of themselves, and it's all about you know not connecting. And I am very kind of touchy feely. I'm all about spirituality and manifesting. And so I'm very cognizant of who I put in front of whom. And that's why I wanted to watch them so you're familiar with them because you know the person that you're wanting to bring on, right? But in order to match their personality, you need to know the other person's personality as well, right? Because you don't want to be a, if they don't like one another, right? It's, it's not going to work for you. So then right. you're going to be in a pickle in the middle. So you already know your friend. Go watch the other ones. Tim and Julie Harris, we had them on, I think, two weeks ago. Sean Kokoska, we had them on months and months ago. So you'll have to go back to the Team Go Go Agent Attraction YouTube channel and then find it, watch it so you get familiar with them, figure out which one who would be the best fit. And maybe it's Eric the best fit for you, right? And then reach out to them and I'm sure they would give you the time of the day. And Go Go is as talented as any one of us. So just so you know has the same background, go, go, I mean, it's a great person to lean on. I mean, look at the way she comes across, right? She is kind, she is well-spoken. You don't hear her bragging. It's never about her. This is all about what she could do for you. So that's what I look for when I refer somebody. Thank you, Eric. But yes, Chad, of course, you you know, you have me in your back pocket. So anytime I can help. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. You're Please. welcome. So you would go, go ahead and ask me about scripts. So again, I start off every conversation um with what i call the open-minded script and i could ask this script today one of 10 times well one of 10 different ways but it is always about you know i really appreciate you taking the time as a matter of fact i have one at 11 and one 11 30. um if we're still on you guys could watch the call i did this with sheila's group the other day um what i do is i thank them for taking the opportunity to speak with me tell them i was really looking forward to our time together and I begin in what I call fact finding, building rapport. People are going to do business with you if they like you, if they trust you, and they deem you as being competent or responsive to their needs. If they like you, if they trust you, and they deem you as being competent or responsive to their needs. So I always ask, you know, would you share with me a little bit about yourself? I'd love to get a flavor for who you are, right? And if you ask that to somebody, they're going to like, where do I start? So I let them know, why don't you share with me a little bit about where are you from originally? right? Personalizes it a little bit. How long have you been in real estate and what type of success are you experiencing? My goal is to break the ice. My goal is not to talk at them and tell them how wonderful I am, right? I do that in the morning when, I sha when I'm shaving, right? My affirmations, I'm wonderful, I'm wonderful, I'm wonderful. I don't need them to tell me I'm wonderful. I need them to feel comfortable with me. And that happens by me asking questions and getting them communicating. So again, would you share with me a little bit about your background? Where are you from originally? How long have you been in real estate? And what type of, what level of success are you experiencing? What are your goals for the next year or the next three to five years? And then I poke at them. I try to find their pain a little bit. I'll typically say, how do you plan on accomplishing that goal? What is your plan to accomplish that? If they're having unusual success, I'll say, I'll acknowledge their success and say, what if someone says to me, I'm selling north of 50 houses, that's usually my bogey. I'll say to them, what do you attribute to your success? It's amazing what you've been able to accomplish. What do you attribute to your success? If they've just sold less than 60 houses, what are your goals for the next 12 months? How do you plan on accomplishing that? Then I'll get into who is your current brokerage partner? What do you like best about having so-and-so as your brokerage partner. And then what don't you like? What would you do to change or modify about the existing relationship you have with your brokerage partner? 
which leads me to the open-minded question. Give me one second. What do you like about your brokerage? What do you like best about your current brokerage partner? What do you like best about your brokerage? And then what don't you like, correct? Yeah. What, do, what would you do to change or modify GoGo, the relationship you have with your existing brokerage partner? In other words, what don't you like about your current brokerage partner? That is identifying their pain point. And they're going to give you a lot. I don't like that. I don't have leads. So I would incorporate that. If someone said to me, I want lead flow, I want a higher payout. Well, would you be open-minded to exploring the EXP brokerage platform if it provided you those all important leads so you could sell more, sell more real estate and also keep more of your commissions? And if the platform may be aligned with the direction you'd like to take your business by offering you multiple streams of income, is that something, Gogo, you'd find compelling? I know that was quick. Would you... I got as far as would you be open minded and then I So if somebody said to me, if somebody said to me, well, I what I don't like is I never get leads from my broker and I'd like to keep more of my commissions, I would say to them, would you be open minded to exploring the EXP brokerage platform? And I throw them back their pain point. Right? If the EXP brokerage platform allowed you that all important lead flow so you could sell more real estate. So you repeat, so this, would you be open to explore the broke, uh, the EXP brokerage platform to get more leads or whatever they told you? Right, that's their hands. And repeat, right. pretty much feed it back on a stable platter. That's right, because remember, yeah. remember, selling is about solving people's problems and meeting people's needs. Selling, if I said nothing else in today's call, selling is about solving problems and meeting needs. They just told me what their biggest problem is. I'm letting them know if I could solve that problem, if I could get you go, go those leads to ensure that you sold more real estate and also keep more of those commissions that you just told me was important to you. And this platform may be aligned with the direction that you wanted to take your business by offering you multiple streams of income, one of which is passive. Would you find that compelling? And for everybody that's on the call today, I want you to understand these are seven or eight questions that any one of you can ask. You don't have to be great at selling. You know what you have to be good at? Listening. Listening, man. I want you guys to think about this. And I often say this, right? Boy, you know, we all have significant others in our life. And you know that point in time where sometimes things get contentious and our significant other is talking at us and we gently want to put our arms around their neck and squeeze a little tighter and a little tighter and a little tighter. You know, nobody likes to be talked at all the time. Well, if you don't like being talked at, keep that in mind. Don't talk at the people that you're speaking with. Ask them questions so they are engaged. The goal is for them to feel comfortable and they will feel comfortable when they are sharing with you, not listening to you. So Mike is asking, what's your next step after they say they are open to listen to look into EXP more? All right, Mike, you ready? Yeah. Mike, Mike, where are you? Mike, uh, I'll have you role play this with me. Mike, can you uh, unmute? I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. All right, Mike. So, Mike, would you be open minded? Say, just say. So, would you? Would we find that compelling? Say yes. Yes. Yeah, I do. Awesome, Mike. What I'd like to do is the following. I am not asking you for any commitment today whatsoever. What I am asking is the following. I am going to send you out an email with two short videos. One video is nine minutes. The other video is 30 minutes, which will provide you a great overview about EXP. Mike, would you commit to watching these videos within the next 24 to 48 hours? Yes. Awesome. And then I'm going to close for the appointment. Mike, I'm looking at my calendar right now, and I have availability. Is typically Wednesdays or Thursdays. Do typically Wednesdays or Thursdays work best for your schedule? Uh, usually Wednesdays. Okay. Are early or latter part of the afternoons better for you? Normally early. Okay. That is called an alternative close, right? Yep. And I'm yep. going to close for the appointment. I'm going to end the conversation saying, Mike, I really appreciate your open-mindedness. I really enjoyed our dialogue today. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Please make sure that this is in your calendar. I have it locked into mine. And I'll be following up with you 
as we have committed at 1 p.m. on Thursday. Perfect. What's the, uh, so the 30 minute I'd imagine is Brent Go video? 30 minute is the Brent Grow video and the nine minute video is the CRM Grow video. CRM Grow video, okay. Yeah, because that way you can see if they actually watched it. And did they watch the whole nine minutes or they watched 27 seconds and they let it go? And then what happens is they receive, it automatically goes out throughout CRM Grow. And then we've built a system within CRM Grow that the email goes out. If they don't open that email within one hour, they'll receive an automated text with the two videos. Our assumption may be that the videos went into the email, the original email went into spam or junk folder. So what will happen is we will send out a text within one hour. If they don't watch those videos within 24 hours, they will get an automated email that's with a friendly reminder. Okay, so explain that to me again, because I was sending a note to my team because I just realized I haven't, I usually get text messages when people watch those videos. And I was just like, I haven't gotten one in a while. So I bet my link is not working. So I literally just texted my team. So you send them the link. I send them the link. I send yep. I send them an email through the system, yep. right? And now we've built this for them. Right, we send it throughout CRM Grow. Okay. They'll receive a, they will receive the email. If yep. they don't open that email, go go within one hour, right? I'll, my assumption is probably went to spam or into their junk mail folder. They'll receive a text with those two emails, letting them know that very often emails go to spam. Want to make sure that they in fact receive the videos. Yada yada yada. All of this is automated for everybody on my team, right? We then, we then um, send it. We send out that text. If they don't act, if they don't actually watch the videos within 24 hours, there will be a third communication. They will receive another email saying, I know that we all get busy sometimes. This is a friendly reminder. And again, the two videos are attached. Is that text or email? So it's email, text, email. Got it. Awesome. And that's set up automatically. So as soon as you plug in that contact and you send the very initial email, the second text message goes out and then a 24 hour email goes out automatically. Correct. Okay. Thank you, sir. And, and then my second call is what we call a rating call. It's a rating call. So before I make that rating call, right, they receive a text. This is a fourth reminder. So I have 30 went out automatically in the system, right? There is a automation that went out saying that we have our scheduled appointment in 30 minutes. Looking forward to hearing your feedback on the EXP videos. This is before I have my second conversation with them, right? Be reaching out to you in 30 minutes. Looking forward to hearing your feedback on the EXP videos. Yada, yada, yada. And then what I'll do is I make what's called a rating call. And on the rating call, on the rating call, um, I ask three questions. Right? So how do, you, how do you spell rating and what does that mean for the four? Rating call. I'm going to rate them on a scale from one to 10. Rating. One meaning they have no interest in joining EXP. 10 is that they're ready to sign their, they're ready to sign their joint application. Got it. Okay. I'm ready. So this is the rating call. All right. And these are the only two calls anybody has to make, right? These are the two things that you have to perfect, right? The rating call. What does a rating call look like? So I use what's called an assumptive close and I do it in the form of a question. And I come at Gogo with a sense of enthusiasm, right? Who's the most enthusiastic person, right? Brent Go. Doesn't it feel like he's going to jump, you know, jump off the screen into your lap? You want to have that level of excitement. You want people to know that you love this organization. How do you expect them to love it and embrace it if you don't love it and embrace it, right? So Gogo, is that not the most amazing videos in terms of a brokerage platform? Have you ever seen a brokerage platform that offers that level of coaching, training, and support? while giving you as a realtor an opportunity to have multiple streams of income and go, go keep more of your commission. Is that not amazing? That's an assumptive close without me telling in the form of a question. I am making an assumptive close in the form of a question. I am not telling. My second question is, go, go, what questions do you have for me today? 
and I'm just there, like Gogo is on the big screen. She is the actress, right? I am sitting there in the audience, eating my popcorn, listening to Gogo and addressing her questions. She is the star, right? So my second question is, Gogo, what questions do you have for me today? Okay, so let's to... play this game. Let's play this game. Sure. First, first one is, I am so excited. Oh my gosh, it was the most amazing video. And I actually have some questions for you, right? Awesome. Second one is, <laughs> well, I wouldn't necessarily say that it was amazing. And I do have some questions because the numbers didn't necessarily make sense for me. Like I'm at a, you know, I pay 250 per deal. So why on earth would I come over and pay 16,000, right? Okay. Interesting. So Let's start with the first one, close me, and then start with the second and close me. Okay. I thought it was amazing, and I have some questions for you. Sure. Go, go. Share with me what questions came up for you. Okay, so I, I want have... you to smile into the phone. I want, you to say, I want you to say this. I want you to really envision yourself having a good conversation. Smile into the phone. You're manifesting success. If you are rigid and you are tight, it's going to be really hard to have a good conversation. And you, you know how you can do that? The easiest way and the weirdest way, but it works, put a mirror in front of you. Like that. Sit in front of a mirror when you're making these calls and literally look at yourself and you realize how often you don't smile and you realize how hard it is to smile and talk. And you cannot, it's your brain, like literally when you smile, your brain thinks you're happy. Literally, you cannot be unhappy and have a smile on your face. It's impossible. So sit and put a mirror until you get to develop this. Like for me, it's a switch, right? You just have to learn. It's almost like acting. But until you do that, put a mirror in front of yourself when you're making those phone calls and realize, holy shit, it's so hard. It is so hard to smile and talk, right? So do that. Okay, so now you're smiling. We're happy. This person is excited. They like the video. And I have the question of like, you know, I don't really understand this icon thing. Like I did 27 deals last year, but how, like how many deals would that be for me to icon? Maybe that's my question, okay? So whatever question she has, and this is where you're going to need to hone your skills and understand. And there's probably six or seven things that you really have to master. You have to understand the benefits of EXP. What Gogo is asking about is the ICON program. And I would say, so Gogo, was it clear to you in watching the video that at EXP, you were gonna have act, you were gonna actually have ownership in this company as we march from 81,000 agents to a million agents. As the company continues to grow, your value in the company or your equity in the company will grow as well at EXP you are going to receive, we are a publicly traded company, and you are going to receive a stock gift, a grant, a reward for every simple milestone that you hit at the company. Are you currently receiving that now, Gogo? Uh, you know. Right? So at EXP, there are four simple milestones. When you sell your first transaction every year on your anniversary date, when you sell the transaction after your anniversary date, you're going to receive your first stock grant. When you introduce an agent to EXP, when you are at transacting and someone says to you, hey, go, go, how do you like EXP? And you love it. That agent comes aboard and they do the first transaction. You're going to receive a second stock grant. Third stock grant happens when you hit your cap of $16,000, right? You hit that $16,000 cap, the company is going to reward you with the third stock grant. What's amazing about this fourth stock grant, listen closely. Fourth stock grant works the following way if you earn what's called icon status at the company. And an icon agent is an agent, it's defined as an agent who either does a half a million dollars in gross commissions, or they do 20 additional sides after they cap. In the event you do that, the $16,000 that you had paid to EXP, the company returns every penny of that back to you, Gogo, -Go, in the form of a sports stock grant, meaning the following, you pay EXP absolutely nothing. Now, you have to hold the stock for three years and allow it to vest. But have you taken note of how our stock has traded historically? So not only are you getting back the $16,000, but your money now, Gogo, -Go, is working for you. And I can tell you colleagues of mine who have accumulated lots and lots of stock have made an absolute fortune, something that typically you and I and other realtors around the globe have never had the ex opportunity to experience. Would you agree? 100%. So every time I say something, I ask a question, would you agree? 
I'm trying to what's called tie her down. So when I make a statement, I end in the form of a question. I am not talking at her, I am engaging her. She has the final word. Would you agree? I need to and that is, called a, that is called a tie down. I am two and a half pages of notes. Started here with your name, Eric Orland, and then I have two pages. I'm going on page number three. Beth, go. Me too. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Eric, it's Beth Manning in Utah. How are you? Good, Beth. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for coming on today. It's oh, you amazing bet. you went from like volleyball beach bum to like sales pro five star dude. I mean, really, that's so Listen, great. Beth, I had to do something good in my life, right? It's so great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really love how you break it so simple. And I'm going to repeat this over and over again. My husband's going to just hate. He's you're gonna, he's going to be hearing you all week. But like. I guess, you know, I don't know about everyone else here, but sometimes I think we get wrapped up in, at least I do, you know, in, in the emotions and the share rather than flipping the switch, like exactly what you said, they are the spotlight, right? But I, I feel like when I've tried to break it down like that before, I always feel like maybe I was over explaining or, but I like the way you, like, it doesn't sound like you're over explaining. Does that make sense what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> Yeah, I do. I think that that's where agents very often get lost, Beth. I think that they try to explain the model. And there are so many moving parts to EXP. In our group, I've never heard Tim Harris do a presentation ever, ever. I'll let you listen to Sean's presentation and make your own determination. I typically do every single presentation for everybody in my group. I do a Wednesday and Thursday call. And I think that it's something, I think we all have what I call our own genius within. I think it's important to tap into that. I think I happen to, I think I happen to share the model pretty well, if I say so myself. I hope that doesn't come off as being terribly arrogant. I think that's something that I've perfected fairly well. But I think you rely on people in the organization to sell for you, be good at sharing the platform and use your upline to sell it for you. I've heard Doga's presentation, she's fabulous. You know, I could, I could cite people, obviously Brent is fabulous, but I'm very, very particular about who I want to share the EXP platform. And I think most of the people in my group don't feel comfortable that they can show up and they don't have to. They don't have to use your upline to sell it for you. I do think it's challenging to sell. There are lots of moving parts. And we all and do I, it differently, right? So we do what's called definitely. Wine Party EXP, Eric. So every Wednesday night we do a presentation and I did it, did it for a very, very long time, every Wednesday night at eight o'clock. And now we are getting to the point where some of our agents that start feeling comfortable themselves, they're filling in, right? So I don't have to do every single Wednesday night for the rest of my life, right? But we all do it our style. So for me, this is why I have to take literally notes of when you talk because my brain does not work that way. Does that make sense? So in order for me to understand this, I have to see it. That's why even when you're talking, I have to write it down because my brain does not comprehend necessarily. I don't want to say I don't comprehend. I probably get about 20% through my ears. But when I write it down and I reread it for myself, so I saw it with my own eyes, now I can understand 80, 90, 100% of it and I can probably re recite it. But I love that we open it up and there's so many different ways how you can do this, right? So Beth, don't be too harsh on yourself of if you are doing it in a different way, as long as it's working. And, and the other thing is we, all, we want our people, right? Just like Eric said, he doesn't necessarily want to have people that he doesn't want to work with. And if I started working in Eric's way, or if I started selling in Kakaska way or Tim Harris way, right? I would attract people that Tim Harris attracts. And I would attract people that Kakaska attracts. And they are not my people, they are their people. <laughs> Right? I don't want to work with those people because we don't have things in common. And now I'm back into real estate having to work with someone for a commission. I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. Right? So don't be too harsh on yourself of how you do it, but maybe just take snippets like from Eric and from everybody else that it fits into your style so it feels home. Gogo, I want to ask you something really quickly. I've got a call in four minutes and I'm happy to stay on. You guys can hear me make the call. I don't know what your time frame is, how long you... Um, how long the meeting is set for, but I've got a call in four minutes. You're more than welcome to listen to the call. Let me double check. Um, I do have meetings. I just want to make sure that they're not on my uh, Zoom. So at 11.30, at el she'll be good until 11.30. I'm going to make a live call in four minutes. This so is so already, he's, already oh. sent out a, he's already sent out a text and he's already received a text. 
and you know they're going to shut up <laughs> yeah so you guys just need to yeah just mute your just mute yourselves but i'm gonna make a live call in four minutes and, you know it, i have fun with that so we'll get back to the rating call but i want to you know i was asked before you know to summarize mindset the takeaways what you need to be successful at doing and i actually took a couple of notes this morning i'd like to share this with you can i quickly share this absolutely but did we answer did we answer back to your question Yes, we did. Okay. Yes. Go, Eric. All right. Number one, right? Number one, to be successful in building a RevShare organization, be clear about your goals and intentions about what you want in terms of your organization. Remember, it's as easy to aim high as it is low. I am determined to have 30,000 agents as part of my EXP organization. You need to manifest what it is that you want. Stop telling yourself a negative message that you can't do something, right? Frame it completely differently. I can and I will. I can and I want you to ingrain that in your mind over and over and over. Second, have RevShare on your calendar. Be committed, whether it is an hour, two hours, three hours, depending how serious you want to be about RevShare, make sure that you are disciplined, that it's on your calendar, and that you follow through with taking action each and every week. Number three, absolutely take the, help, take the time to hone your skills, right? You need to be really good at asking these questions and doing so with a sense of confidence and competence. When I talk about, you know, enhancing your selling skills, I mean the qualifying scripts that I'm going through with, with you, objection handling, knowing how to isolate, handle, and overcome objections. It's the same five objections you hear over and over and over. Stop looking at somebody like a deer in headlights. When somebody gives you an objection, you should have that kind of warm and fuzzy feeling going, you know what? I get to extend an olive branch here and really cement this relationship. Approach people with confidence and comfortability. Nobody, nobody, nobody is bigger than EXP. We are a multi-billion dollar company. We're the fastest growing real estate company of all time. You have something that any agent with an open mind and an open heart wants. Know, Beth, that you could approach anybody, that you are coming from a place of giving, trying to assist them in fending better for themselves and their families. Nobody is doing me a favor talking about EXP. And I don't say that, I don't say that arrogantly. I say that comfortably, that Glenn Sanford has created this platform that we have the ability to simply share with others. Know that you could do that. What was the last note I took, took here? Um, mindset. Mindset is to be of service. Come at people in the most spiritually healthy way possible. People are not pocketbooks. They're not wallets. They're not bank accounts. They are human beings. Take the time to build a relationship by asking the right questions. Those are what I call my five key things that I constantly come back to. My five main mindsets that I constantly come back to and remind myself each and every day why I need to pick up this phone and forge relationships with others. Okay, guys, I'm gonna call this cat right now. Ooh. Okay. This guy from Miami just texted me. He's looking good. All right. Kaliki. Key Kelly, my son has him down for noon, but he puts something different. My system, yeah, Jackson, I'm on a Zoom call. Can I ask you a quick question? Kaliki, is that noon or 11 o'clock? I'm on a Zoom call. Is Kaliki 11 or 12? It's one thing in CRM Grill. It's another thing on my calendar. I didn't get much of an answer. Let's give him a shot. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Hello. Hi, Kaliki. That's Kelly. K Kelly, K Kelly, Eric Orland calling. How are you? I'm good. Where are you calling from? Uh, EXP. You had spoken with Jackson the other day, and he had scheduled an appointment for us to speak today. Oh, okay. How are you, sir? Good, good. Did I reach you at a good time? It's not a bad time. Awesome. 
Um, Jackson had given me a little bit about your background, but I'd love to get a better feel for who you are. Share with me a little bit about yourself, where you're from originally, how long have you been in real estate, and what type of success are you experiencing in the industry? Uh, decent success. Um, I've been in real estate for about 15 months. Oh, excellent. Uh, I would tell the Williams. I've probably done close to 20 transactions in my first 15 months. Um, I have to tell you, that is, that, those are great numbers. What do you attribute to your success thus far? No, I work, man. I, I'm, I'm knocking on doors. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do to get everything I need. Awesome. So, just out of curiosity, what did you... Just out of curiosity, what did you do prior to real estate? I was a school bus driver. Hard to pick out, gather information, so I threw another question. You were a school bus driver? Yeah. Amazing. What got you into real estate? Uh, I, own, I own property myself, so I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to do this side of it. I saw the market going high and people are overpaying for homes. I said, this is a good time to get a license, even though that's, that was the opposite time. That's the wrong time to get a license, but right. I did it and here I am. Well, congratulations on your success. Where do you, can Kelly, where do you want to take your business going forward? If you were to project out a year, what are your goals? In other words, in terms of volume? Seven million. Oh, wow. Seven million in production. How do you plan on doing that? What is your game plan to accomplish that? Stay in it, man. Stay in it. Uh, keep working. <laughs> keep working. Keep meeting people. Not working. Uh, yeah, that's it. And this, goal, this, year, this year, my goal, second year, my goal was five million. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to hit that this year because of all the stuff going on. But. You had mentioned that you've been at KW for about 15 months now. Is that correct? No, I've been at KW for 10 months. Oh, 10 months now. Got it. You've been in the industry for 15. You got licensed 15 months ago. Yeah. Awesome. And I left my previous broker. Uh, just out of curiosity, what do you like best about affiliating with KW? What do you like best about having them as your brokerage partner? Uh, they care about us, man. Uh, that's like, that's what stood out. When I, when I, when I, my first brokerage, when I was there, I left. I was interviewing with everybody locally, and KW just offered the best for me. Um, the sense of family mm -hmm. is a good teaching. Uh, the program, the chiefs, the technology, mm -hmm. everything we have at KW is what attracted me to the company. So if I'm hearing you specifically, I just want to make sure that I've captured this. So it is the family-like feeling that KW offers. The technology sure. you had the technology you, you had mentioned. Anything else come to mind? Oh yeah, I love I love. Uh, like I love our events, like family reunion. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar? I am. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that uh, makes me really love what I do. You know, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a more challenging question. What don't you like? What would you do to change or modify about your existing relationship with Keller Williams? Yeah, honestly, think of nothing. Um, I wish if I was to say uh, one thing, I would say I wish we get more leads. Um, that's all I can honestly say. You know, uh -huh. um, KW don't provide leads. And yeah, that's absolutely the only thing I can say. To Kelly, let me ask you a question. Would you be open to the EXP brokerage platform if it allowed you to keep more of your commission and it, if it provided you the lead flow that you're looking for, so you could hit that $7 million number, that's all important to you. If the EXP platform aligned with the direction that you wanted to take your career by offering you even better technology and events, just like, what did you call it, family? Um, family, the, the EXP's annual, uh, KW's annual retreat, 
if EXP offered you the same type of thing, but better technology, and it absolutely puts you on path to hit that $7 million number by giving you lead flow, would you be open-minded to changing brokerages? No, because if it's the same exact thing, it's not going to have a beer. Why would I change your mind? No, if you could, if you if you actually got lead flow and were assured of hitting that seven million dollar number, were able to keep more of your commission, and if 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 there were multiple streams of income that were also made available to you, multiple streams of income with things like having ownership in the company and a passive income stream that you don't have now. Would you consider if it was financially better for you and your family? Would you consider making this <laughs> making a change? Yeah, absolutely. You would. <laughs> yes. Great. Have you watched the EXP videos that were sent out to you? No, not yet. I've been very busy. I live in Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. and we just had a mass shooting, so there's a lot of things going oh, on in Buffalo. Right I now. am so sorry. I saw that on the news. That was horrific. Yeah. That was absolutely horrific. Can I quickly distinguish you for you the difference between Keller Williams and EXP? Okay. okay. I'm driving. I have, I, have, I, have, I have nothing but time this morning. You called me on a good time. Perfect. This is perfect for both of us. So if you wouldn't mind sharing with me, what is your split right now at KW? 70-30. Uh, 70-30. And you're paying a 6% franchise fee, I believe? So at EXP, you're an 80-20 split. There's no franchise fees. So you're immediately put, be putting 14% extra in your pocket. On $7 million in business, do you realize what type of cap are you on? Well, I cap at KW. So. No, and at EXP, we have a cap as well. So what is your cap at KW? Uh, 1.5. One point, is there a dollar amount associated with that? Is that 20,000, 21,000? Sorry? Uh, there is, but I don't know. I just, I just estimated that like oh, 1.4 million. So, so 1.4 million at 3%, whatever that number is, is roughly what? 1.4 million at 3%. Uh, 12,000, okay. it's about 12,600. That doesn't make no, sense. That's impossible. Yeah, that is impossible. So, um, I believe, is it thirty nine thousand? Is it thirty nine thousand? No, I think I, I think I I think it's under twenty for sure. Okay, so DXP the cap is sixteen thousand eighty twenty split no franchise fee. So right there, Kelly, you're sa saving yourself thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Number one. Number two, you said to me, Eric, it's really important I get to 7 million. And I wish, you love Keller Williams, but you said, I wish I had more lead flow. At KW, you use a system, I believe, called Command. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. At EXP, we use a system called KV Core. Are you familiar with KV Core? No, I'm not. KV Core is widely considered to be the best CRM in the industry today. What do you think makes it the best CRM? Uh, I thought command was the best. I didn't know it was anything better than command. Yeah, if you go online and, and research KV Core, again, that's like Karen Victor Core, you'll take note, KV Core costs about $600 a year. What makes it the best CRM, Kelly, is the fact that it has a lead generating mechanism. And if you... Um, it's given to you for free at EXP. Okay. And if you put in place a minimal ad spend campaign, I'm going to arbitrarily say the cost of a Starbucks, four to five bucks a day, you'd receive over a hundred leads a month. I could tell you as one of the founders of Movoto that internet leads typically converted two to 4%. As long as an agent is responsive and really focused on nurturing a relationship. If you got a hundred leads a month and we're converting two to 4%, do you understand that's, a, that's an additional 24 to 48 extra transactions? Would that not get you to seven million? Yeah, well. The other thing I wanted to point out to you, the other big difference is between Keller Williams and, and EXP is at KW, are, do you currently have any form of ownership? 
in the brokerage that you're helping to build? No. At EXP, we're publicly traded. Aside from being the fastest growing real estate company in the history of real estate, we, the agents, own a good percentage of ownership of the company. At EXP, when you hit simple milestones, you are given free stock in the company. EXP is right now at 81,000, projected to have a million agents within the next 10 years. The industry has never seen a brokerage company grow this quickly. Can you imagine having ownership in a brokerage company as it marches from 81,000 to a million agents? No. And the last thing. Is that because of, is that because of so the, what, one of, would you say one of the reasons why people are switching to EXP is because of that, of that stock? I think that there, I think, I think that there are four or five main reasons that people are switching to EXP. Number one, much better technology. We are cloud-based. We have technology that helps you identify buyer and seller leads and transact in the most efficient manner possible so you can spend more quality time with your buyer and seller clients and identify new clients. We have you know, support 500 full-time employees that are at your beck and call to answer questions immediately so you can transact as efficiently as possible. We have offices we can actually go to. So we have, um, I think, where do, you, where do you spend most of your time working? Do you work out of your home for the most part? Uh, no, I work out of uh, my Elmwood office. So, you know, what, what I've taken note is that EXP, uh, what, what I've taken note of in the industry is most agents work out of the comfort of their home today. They'll even go to a coffee shop. They don't want to feel confined to an office. But in fact, if an agent wants to use an office to meet clients, they could use their title company's office. They could use their lender's office. We also have a relationship, and I know you have them in Buffalo, uh, with Regis Corporate Suites. Are you familiar with Regis? Not really. Regis has 3,000 offices around the country that you're able to use as frequently as you'd like free of charge. As a matter of fact, I'm happy to look, I'm happy to look right now on my phone uh, where the closest Regis is to you in Buffalo. Would you feel more comfortable using an office if you had access to it? Uh, yes. Okay, so I'm just pulling something up here in Buffalo, New York. There are actually several locations. Are you familiar with the Key Center at 50 Fountain Plaza? It's in downtown Buffalo. Yeah, I know that area. Or North Town, North, North Towns at 300 International Drive. I know the downtown one. Yeah, so you would have access to using either of these offices as frequently as you'd like free of charge. And if you happen to be traveling, you could use a Regis office anywhere around the globe that you happen to be. Same thing with KW. Oh, you could use any one of their offices. So your, your question to me was, Eric, does EXP have offices? And actually, we have more offices to use than any other brokerage firm on the planet. Right. The other big distinction I'd like to make for you is the following. Are you participating? Are you participating in KW's profit share plan? Yes, I am. Have, so you are participating in the profit share, share plan. So you understand the importance and significance of having a passive and residual income. Yes. EXP offers something, but I think you'll see with much greater, greater benefit. A profit share plan, correct me if I'm wrong, typically works that the branch shares its profits with the agents who are simply referring clients to KW. Is that correct? Yes. But there's a certain, only a certain amount of profits. And at KW, there are lots of different layers, as I understand. There are team leaders, there are regional, there are territory managers. So the profitability is somewhat minimal. The KW is sharing with you the profitability that comes from a certain branch. But I think you and I could agree, if there's not a whole lot of profit, there's not a whole lot to share, is there? Watch the difference, K. Kelly. I think you'll embrace this. At EXP, there are no brick and mortar. There are no offices. There's no the same overhead to maintain them in terms of supplies, salaries, and furniture. The company brilliantly and generously takes half not of their profits, of their revenues. 
Last quarter, EXP did a billion dollars in revenues. The companies take half of these revenues and give it back to the agents who are helping to grow and build EXP. When we first started our conversation, I said to you, what do you attribute to your success? And you said to me, Eric, man, I get after it. Is that not what you said? Yes. Well, brother, I want to show you what getting after it is. I've been with EXP for two years and six months. I have only sponsored, I have 66 active agents in my organization right now. I get paid on the production, not from the agents, from the company sharing its revenues. I get paid on agents where I have over 2,000 agents in my organization paying me a passive income of multiple millions of dollars a year for the rest of my life. Is that something that resonates for you? Absolutely. Great. When can I get 15 minutes? I'd like you to watch the videos and I want to make sure that we're not wasting each other's time. Is this something you'd find compelling and do you want to take a deeper dive into the model together to see if EXP aligns with the direction you'd like to take? Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to go watch the video actually once I get home right now. Yeah. 15 minutes. Okay. What I'd like you to do is the following. I'd like you to put together a list of questions that, that I will answer for you. I want to build a relationship with you. And when you come over, I want you to know that this absolutely aligns with the direction that you would like to take things. I want to make sure that you're comfortable. So please take the time to peruse the videos and formulate any questions that I could provide answers to. Okay. So let's get something on the calendar. I'd love your feet to get your feedback. Um, how does either Monday or Tuesday work best for your schedule? Uh, Monday, no good. Uh, Tuesday, yes. Monday, I'm going to start my week off fresh and attack the market. And then uh, Tuesday, uh, I can squeeze you in. That was early morning. 9 a.m.? Or would 10 be better? Or would 10 be better? 9 is better for me. 9 o'clock. Do me a favor. I live by my calendar. I'm putting it in my calendar right now. Please put it in your calendar. Um, I will make speaking to you on Tuesday at 9 a.m. a priority. Thank you, sir. Hey, I enjoyed talking to you. Hey, I want to thank you for being open-minded. This may turn out to be something that you really wind up embracing, and it may be really beneficial in terms of how you're able to fend for yourself and your family and hitting the type of numbers that you're looking to hit. Thank you. Hey, have a great rest of the day. I look forward to speaking uh, on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Yeah. You as well. Woo! Really? <laughs> you, you the man. Thanks. What? That was awesome. <laughs> you the man. That was, that was my, my son set that up for me. Yeah, I had no idea who I was speaking to, but yeah, I just took him through the questions and I fact find it for him. I mean, what I think what the takeaway for that call, right, is that I understood I was able to clear, I was able to create a clear, clear distinction between what he was receiving at, EX, at uh, KW and what EXP offers him. The model sells itself. All I did was lay it out for him. And after every question, is that compelling? Does that make sense to you? Does that align with the direction you'd like to take things? And he basically was like, check, 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 check. He sold himself. That was amazing. Thanks. You we were all commenting. You we were talking. We were all like. Yeah, I didn't even get to look at the chat box. I get really <laughs> locked in, but. Yeah, Colleen said that uh, you just got your 2001 agent. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. But you know, any one of you, Colleen, Steve, Kat, as I'm looking at the screen here, Robert, Derek, Coco, any one of you could do this. I mean, it's not brain surgery. You know, it's really about going out there. I wasn't, and I'm not attached to the income. I come in every relationship with a sense of confidence, knowing that we have something really special here at EXP. We have something really, really special here. Yeah. And folks, it's never too late to get win at rev share. You know, we're at 81,000 agents right now. We're expecting to have a million agents within the next 10 years. Do you realize we're at 8.1% of our projected growth? And, you know, as people like myself exit the industry, right? What we have is new blood coming into the industry, kids that are much more tech savvy, that love working out, love working in their pajamas and the comfort of their home and embracing cloud based. I think Netflix has shown us that. I think Amazon has shown us that. We have an enormous opportunity here. 
I believe that eXp is the best, best, best business platform I have ever seen because of the inherent benefit it provides to glo- uh, realtors on a global basis. I mean, you sold me. I'm, I'm signing up again. <laughs> you're awesome, Eric. Thank you so much. Oh, you're more than welcome. For <laughs> letting us listen in how you close someone on the phone so easily. Like you made it look like you know what? I think to me, I don't want to speak for everybody, but to me, the fact that you talk so slow and then you ask him a question and then you pause uncomfortably until they answer. <laughs> like that's a talent, right? Because that's uncomfortable and you want to say something just to get out of that uncomfortable situation, but you can't because the first one talking loses, right? So you just ask the question and then you just wait. I'm going to piggyback on what you just said because it's really important what Gogo just said. I want you guys to think about something in closing. Who's in control of the conversation? The person that's speaking or the person who's asking questions? Asking questions. If I ask Gogo a question, she has to respond to me, don't you, Gogo? Yeah. I just did it to you, didn't I? Didn't I? Mm-hmm. This is called a tie down, isn't it? I could do this all day long, couldn't I? It's not about speaking, it's about asking. You are in control when you ask and you let somebody speak. You don't have to speak. You simply have to ask and guide. That's awesome. That's awesome. So Eric, can I ask you, since you did share the big number, but can I ask you where, like what draft share pays at 2,000 agents a month? Um, 77,000. That's awesome. So you're not broke anymore? I'm not broke anymore. Boy, my girlfriend, my girlfriend's really fallen madly in love with me. I'm kidding. That was a joke. So probably <laughs> so watch, you, you know, really, really. I'm dying so. to know. Did you? Did she give you a five thousand dollar loan? And did you? I pay have it? to be honest with you. She did. <laughs> she was a little nervous about it. And she, she still went out with you after that. Huh? Wow. I'll say it. Say it again. Steve she still went out with you after asking for five thousand. She huh? She's like, she said to me, "This is the weirdest date I think I've ever had." I said, "I know." <laughs> but I said, I think we dig each other. So, you know what? You that? know, I did I felt comfortable asking. And she did. She saved my she saved my hide. And um it's worked out well for us. It's worked out really well for us. It's really okay. strengthened our strengthened our relationship. She believed in me at a time was I when I wasn't sure if I believed in myself. So um EXP has allowed me to create a dream and then build something that's been really spectacular. I love coming to work every day, man. I love coming to work every day. I love having these phone calls. I got another one at 1130. I I love having these phone calls. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. You are so wonderful. I'm excited to run into you at one of these events and give you a hug. You're awesome. So are you. I appreciate all that you do for EXP. Guys, have a wonderful day. Have a great weekend. And remember, chart your course. It's up to you. Take this thing wherever you want to take it. But you are in control. Manifest what you want.